On today's episode of Sawdust, we're going to be focusing on white oak at the oceanfront paradise home. The client's interior designer picked a lot of ceiling finishes with white oak as the finish, and the goal was to create the white oak ceiling without a lot of beams. So that was step one. Step two would be navigating the complexities of two different roof pitches, a miter, and not having any beams to cover the work, which really showcases the skill of the finished carpentry trade. So without further ado, let's head over and let's check out some white oak. I'm Jeff Sweener, President and CEO of Sweener Builders. For more than 30 years, we've been building coastal homes meant to last 100 plus years. Our team of talented craftsmen and design professionals are committed to delivering extraordinary results through the best practices and techniques in custom home building. Our final product has to be beautiful, highly efficient, and use advanced building science to stand up to the harsh coastal conditions. On this season of Sawdust, we're pulling back the curtain to give you an inside look at what we do. For some reason, White Oak has been really difficult to source lately, but our friends at New England Wood Products helped us out with that specifically getting us the long lengths that we needed for the uh, size of the ceiling. So let's kick it over to Scott at New England Wood Products. This is our main production shop where we take raw wood in its natural form and we do all the prep work and final milling. We start with raw lumber and we skip it through our planer to read it see the curvature of the boards and to make it parallel. White oak typically will have a little bit more movement than other woods, so skip dressing it is key. Then we rip it through our gang rip department to make all the widths uniform as well. And then turn, feed it through our machines in the back to do the final product. And the machines have multiple heads so we're able to put in a solid square block of wood and out the other end, it will do all the milling. This makes it a little more streamlined. And essentially it comes out of that machine as a finished product. I'm Peter Fontaine, project manager with Sweeney Builders here at Miss Oceanfront Property in Narragansett. As of last week, we received a lot of white oak care from New England Wood Products. And they previously milled up this one by eight for us in the V groove. We have roughly 3,000 or so square feet in the house and another 4,000 square feet in a storage container outside. We're letting it acclimate. It came at a pretty good acclimation level of moisture. The white oak is, expands and contracts so much and we're here on the ocean, so we're receiving a lot of moisture here. To keep the wood under proper moisture control, we have various air conditioning units throughout the house. So we're keeping roughly in the mid-60s here. The white oak's gonna go in various areas of the house. It's gonna go in all the living room, dining room, kitchen areas here. We have big cathedral ceilings in the mudroom and gym. The second floor, we have a bedroom up there as well as the office in the wing over here by the mudroom and the gym. It's currently very hard to get white oak. Um, everybody's having issues. That's why we end up going through New England wood products. We're very fortunate to get even 16 foot lengths. Uh, our sizes vary from like 12 to 16. Definitely created a challenge is creating more work for our finished cop in the field because now they have to not only join the corners together, they also have to make butt joints and try a grain match. And you know, it's really challenging, but fortunately we have some awesome carpenters here at Swinner Builders who can make it all happen. This is our mudroom, and the challenge with this, as you can see, it's a cathedral ceiling. So because the client wanted a beamless look in this mudroom, which means no valley beams and no beams where the oak is hitting the drywall, it's a more complicated process to achieve that look. We have less wiggle room, and there's nothing that's gonna be applied after the fact to cover any gaps that we have in our miters or where our oak meets our drywall. On top of that, this is a bastard valley, which means that these two slopes are completely different pitches. In order to achieve a returned miter look on these valleys, 
these are actually two different width boards. So in order to visualize this, we made a mock-up of this valley. This left side plane is actually a 6 and 11 16 field for the oak. And this right side, the width is 7 inches full. We have two different miters as well. This is a 36 degree miter and this is a 39 degree miter, both with 27 degree bevels to achieve this joint. Right now we're on our third course on this wall. Our first course tightly scribed into our drywall and then our butt ends are scribed into our drywall as well. And now that we have our first two courses up, we're able to start kind of plotting our straight line as we go up this ridge. We don't want our miters to start deviating and sawtoothing at all, so it's important to keep a consistent line the whole way through. So we're gonna take that down, cut that. So now that we have our two pieces, our main run and our miter return, we are going to use the Lamello system to join them together. Lamello system is an awesome tool. I can't say enough great things about it. It cuts time in half. We're going to go ahead and plunge these in. Specifically, we're using the Clamex clamps today. So we got our biscuits inserted with these two pieces. Pretty simple, you click right together like so, and then insert your hex key and it's a quick quarter turn. Now you can see the front of this miter is nice and tight. It's never gonna open up. Once you put glue in there, it's good to go for life. So once we get our piece nested in there, make sure everything's all set, we're touching the drywall, miter didn't open up, we have the opportunity to blind fasten this side of the room. We are utilizing these strips of plywood that are attached to our rafters and we're screwing from the back so that we don't have any nail holes in the field. We're not having to nail through the tongue, possibly blowing that out. So we have our course up, we have 10 more on this quadrant to go. We have roughly 8,000 linear feet of this white oak from New England wood products that we have to put up. And as far as this mudroom goes, this is going to be our process throughout each quadrant to achieve this nice tight mitered look. One of the beautiful things about white oak, it's awesome to work with, it finishes beautifully, it's nice crisp clean look, but there's no room for error. There's no fill, it's not getting painted. So all your errors will be seen. So this is a time consuming process, but ultimately in the end, it's gonna be worth it. I'm Rachel Ryder, I'm founder of Ryder & Co and Creative Lead. And I'm Christina Rinaldi, and I'm a senior designer and project manager. The inspiration behind using white oak in the property was a number of reasons. We loved that it was light, airy, it has a beautiful grain, so there's a lot that you can do with it. And we felt like white oak really spoke to a coastal environment. The client's taste is very modern, but they wanted the home to still feel warm and inviting, and we found that bringing natural materials in can be a great way to really add warmth and layers to a space. The white oak paired with stone and really sort of soft, nubby textures creates this very layered and beautiful, inviting environment. I think the original intent with the ceilings was to have some more traditional themes that you would see, but because the client does have a more modern sensibility, we thought if there is a way that we can make it work without the beams and just sort of make it lighter and you know more clean lined, we should. 
we found that the white oak has really been sort of the foundation and the cohesive element that we've used to weave a story throughout the whole house. All right, guys, so the last time we were here, uh, we were working our way up our quadrants with our course lines and our compound miters. Um, as you can see, recently finished this mudroom. We're gonna walk you through basically the steps that it took to achieve where we're at right now. So we continued our course lines on each quadrant up to the ridge, checked with the story pole to keep integrity. And once we met to a certain point, we were posed with the problem of how do we pull this off without putting a ridge beam in there. So I came up with a clever solution for this and we ended up inserting a two and a quarter inch piece into the actual V groove that slid in the 12 feet touching the wall. So it was a nice clean look. We capped it off in the middle and that's where we came up to our next problem is how do we have our flat ceiling transition into our pitch ceilings cleanly without any beam work that would necessarily hide where our joints would be. We ended up having to pack down the ceiling from what was originally there with the collar ties and we ended up taking a measurement wall to wall and creating a width that would work so we could start on a full course and end on a full course when we meet the other wall. Along with the scribes to the drywall, we were left with scribes where we butted our oak runs up here. What we ended up doing is creating a chamfered groove on our flat part that clicked into the top of the tongue of our courses. So the challenge is creating a clean chamfer line all the way across from wall to wall that's not gonna sawtooth, that's not open in any way because there's really, there's minimal wood behind each piece. This mudroom is definitely the most challenging ceiling that I've faced in my career. The reason it was so challenging was the fact that every cut was scribed to drywall or scribed to another piece of oak. We also had compound miters that are gonna be visible for all the world to see that aren't gonna be covered up by anything. Along with plotting and planning on how to have our course lines meet up and what to do with the challenges we were posed of having no beams up top at all. So ultimately, I think it went really well and we're pleased with the product and we're on to the next. And that's a wrap for this episode of Sawdust. You can see it took a whole team to deliver this extraordinary white oak. If you like what you saw, give us a follow, give us a comment, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time on a future episode where we deliver extraordinary.